So hi, um, today I've uh, decided just to turn on the camera while I install this US2000 lithium battery into my solar uh, power system. I already have two batteries totaling 4.8 kilowatts and uh, this one is another 2.4 on top of that. Now this is actually the US2000B, not the US2000. Um, for the US2000C they do actually mark that on the front panel but uh, I've checked the serial number and it is a US2000B. For me that makes no difference, I'm using it with a so far uh, inverter and uh, it's only going to discharge to about 98, between 80 and 90%. Um, so it comes with all the cables necessary, these are just in the box with it, uh, you don't have to order them specially or anything like that. Um, it also has uh, some rack mounting screws um, so uh, if you choose to rack mount it, um, but I'm actually going to use it with uh, some brackets and uh, there they are and uh, yeah and so so these are kind of like stackable brackets. Um, so anyway uh, I decided it was cost effective for me to move up from 4.8 uh, kilowatt hours to uh, 7.2 kilowatt hours uh, for storage uh, and uh, yeah I'm just going to kind of fit this. This will involve me crawling around under the stairs probably panting and swearing quite a lot but uh, you know hopefully it will be useful for people. Now just here we've got some link ports um, so these daisy chain together through these link ports these are the data connections and the uh, on just to the left you can see there's a CAN port uh, and that's where the inverter joins. Now the batteries uh, basically just join up in parallel and uh, as I say in the box they do provide the cables for that uh, and we'll see that when I come to fit it. So first up I actually need to take off these uh, rack mount brackets and uh, these are the tiny little screws that hold them on there's uh, four on each bracket and uh, you need a Phillips head number one screwdriver for this not a posi drive if you're in Europe and uh, what you really need to do is make sure you get really good purchase on the screw before you try and turn it because uh, they've sprayed the surface uh, and the screws are slightly locked in place they're very soft screws if your screwdriver slips the screw will be ruined you're never going to get it out and you'll have to drill it out so uh, so yeah make sure you get really good firm contact little little um, tweak and hopefully it will break the paint and you can just take the screw out okay next so seven of the eight screws came out the last one I had to drill uh, and I drilled that with a five point five millimeter drill bit which seems to be about right for the job just drill it through enough uh, so the head comes off and you can take the uh, the bracket off the side uh, and then you can get a pair of pliers and uh, just remove the uh, the little stub that's uh, that's sticking out it should unscrew without any problem so I'm going to connect up a few things like the uh, the earth leads that I'm going to use which are actually shortened because uh, I don't need the length of lead that they provide uh, and also the uh, the link leads to uh, the data links between the units. I'm just going to prefit those so that uh, I don't have to carry them all as separate bits and pieces under the stairs. Um, this is a good time to mention though that uh, this is uh, 50 volts thereabouts and uh, on the output terminals and uh, can deliver about 50 amps so uh, yeah it is actually quite a dangerous current and voltage so I will leave those um, covers in place for the time being uh, and not deal with them until I've got everything in place and turned everything off um, and then I will feel reasonably safe to uh, to do the work on that uh, on the high current uh, sections. So uh, this just leaves me to have to uh, wiggle on the uh, the brackets these are the stackable brackets and uh, yeah and they've got little sort of pins on either side to center it up and uh, and it only fits one way it has a lip at the front so you put the front one on from the front you put the back one on from the back and uh, yeah and that's it but uh, I like to do as much as I can while I'm not crawling around on my hands and knees underneath the cupboard okay so camera under stairs and here's the existing installation and uh, this was done by the so-called professionals but uh, it's not really very impressive to be perfectly honest anyway um, the US2000 C's and uh, yeah you can see they're just daisy chained together there's the data coming out of uh, link 1 into link 0 of the bottom one and on the right hand side we've got the paralleled up mains connections over on the left we've got uh, an earth lead uh, and I am going to um, do something with that so I don't have uh, enough cabling to go back into the main thing so I'm going to start earth off that uh, and that's fine because uh, if you've got a cabinet you would actually just earth the cabinet and screw all these into the cabinet. Okay. 
Excellent. Right. Ooh. Okay. So we should now be up to the stack of three. And we can see some of our original connections at least. So what I'm going to do first of all is basically turn everything off. And this one is on. So these are all off now and the outputs are off. So I can do my reconfiguration. These have a little push button on them. If you don't press the push button, they don't release. Uh, with a camera under here, there's not a lot of room for me. I'm not sure I can actually get these off. I'm not going to bother. So essentially these are all going to go in parallel anyway. And uh, we'll put our first two on to begin with. This is how you kind of want them laying out from the left to right, right to left, but you know, hey, things are what they are. leave this one top one covered and uh, before doing anything else I will just sort out this earthing so as I said I would prefer to take all of these three back to uh, the originating point of this one which is the uh, main distribution ball but unfortunately there's not enough space for that so I'm not going to and uh, let's just sort out the data while I'm here. So that data goes in the EV can. There we go. These cables are just going to tuck down out of the way. Lovely. And we connect link one to link zero on the bottom one there. So you can see we go from one to the next to the next to the next. Whew. Okay, check all our wires. So we've got covers on all the empties. And yeah, I think we are there. So we power this guy on, we power this guy on, power this guy on. Yeah, hopefully they're all on. And then we press this button here for about a second and he should come on then the next one so the top one should have the latest firmware and be mastering all of the others and it's mastering the second one down absolutely fine but not communicating with the uh, with the bottom one which is um, actually quite a new box it's only a couple of months old um, and uh, yeah in a second or two we will see think the top one is going to uh, fault in just a second or two. Okay, so um, essentially what I'm going to have to do is probably just change the order of these and make uh, the original US2000C the master again and put the uh, 2000B on the bottom of the stack. By the way, if you've got a 3000C that will always go on the top of the stack. Okay, so uh, here they are. Let's see if we can perhaps find a little bit more light. So, um, with the 2000B on top as the master, it didn't actually operate. 
that was alarming out um, so I've swapped it round it's now on the bottom the master on the top I prefer it that way round I could put the master on the bottom and work upwards but uh, the connections don't work well that way so uh, here we go we've got an existing US 2000C on the top there's the CAN bus coming in here and here's our links link one going to link zero link one to link zero there's our configured parallel connections so right to left right to left right to left right to left then we pull out the negative at the bottom and the positive at the top blank off the two extras okay so i think we're about there um, these are installed and all three are working we can see the uh, the led flashing on the uh, charge level there they come 50 percent charged and um, so i just need to modify my uh, winter program now um, to uh, charge the extra battery um, so instead of charging about six kilowatts overnight i will charge so about four and a half kilowatts overnight i'll charge seven kilowatts overnight and that will see me a good way through the day uh, i only pay 5p per kilowatt hour at night uh, so this is a very cost effective way of doing it for me i pay 15p during the day so it makes a lot of sense to charge at night than use during the day um, in the summer i have a different program um, because these will uh, these, these will fully charge from the solar panels over the day they won't essentially be used after about uh, nine ten o'clock in the morning uh, and uh, then they'll kick in at about nine o'clock at night and uh, essentially um, they'll last till the next day and then they'll get their next charge um, should there be a bad spell of weather then i can always put a program in to perhaps uh, put a couple of kilowatts in just to uh, to top them up um, but anyway there we go that's it um, adding an extra uh, pylon tech us 2000 into the stack of existing batteries is no big deal um, you don't necessarily have to use those brackets i like them because they just give a little bit of breathing space around the battery to stop it overheating but if you enjoyed that please give it a thumbs up um, comments down below of course and if you haven't already done so please remember to subscribe that's all for now i'll see you next time bye